like to welcome everyone to the Dominica State College and ask for your engagement today. We'd like to open up with a word of prayer, and I believe someone has been chosen for that, so I'd like to invite the person to come to the podium to open us up with a word of prayer. I'd like everyone to please stand. Church here at the Dominica State College. Once again, I welcome you to our humble abode. Um, we are in BC4, which is our seminar room, and we'll be participating in this debate here in this room in our upper campus to officially begin today's proceedings. Of course, it's Oral Health Week, and that's the reason that we are all here and we're going to engage in debate. I'd like to welcome Dr. Idolyn John to the podium, the Chief Dental Officer to give the welcome remarks. Dr. John. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, staff, and students of the State College. Our esteemed judges, Dr. Robinson, Ms. Gail Charles, and Mr. Ashley Massicot, being able here and the studio here also for, for really accepting to host us here to have this all of um, debate. Being able to address you this morning on this momentous occasion is indeed a blessing as we get to shed some light on a very important health issue. Oral Health Day is celebrated annually on March 28th around the world. This year's theme a happy world, a happy body, is part of a three years campaign and this year places emphasis on the important link between oral health and its overall, overall health. While some might take the course of dental care as a deterrent to maintaining regular visit and checkups, which I anticipate a healthy debate debatable. One must never forget that the mouth is linked to many of our body systems. Regular dental checkups and consultations with a dentist are crucial in ensuring proper care and prevention of oral diseases. Good oral hygiene practices such as brushing, flossing regularly help pre prevent common dental problems like cavities, gum disease, and bad breath. Heart disease, diabetes, respiratory infections, and adverse pregnancies have all been linked to or compounded by poor oral health. Digestion is impacted negatively by an unhealthy mouth. Bad breath and missing teeth can also can affect one's self-confidence drastically and even certain oral lesions left unchecked can be led to fatal oral cancer. It really goes without saying, timely dental checkups can save a lot of pain, suffering, and even money with early detection of dental health issues and even systemic diseases such as cancer, diabetes, anemia, osteoporosis, which often manifests in the mall. This being said, we can continue to, we continue to encourage individuals to take greater responsibility for their oral health and adopt healthy habits for the benefit of overall well-being. To the debating team, put your best foot forward, 
your participation here is not just an ordinary debate, but you are also being champion of a healthy cause. The information that you share here today will go a long way in encouraging many people to take proper care of their own oral hygiene. All the best and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. John. So, with that being said, it is time to get into the official procedure or the official process of debating, which we are gathered here for today. It is my job today to be the moderator, and so I will lead you and the students and, and our listeners through the process of the debate today. Of course, I am passionate about debating, so I'm excited about this debate, and I do hope that you all are as well. I really also want to say I am very happy to see so many members of the dental health team here this morning, and also to have our students from the Literary and Debating Society, some of them present here today, and I hope many listeners on MO News. So today, the topic for debate is, the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population. I will repeat the topic. The cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population. Allow me at this time to introduce the debaters who will be tackling this topic. On the proposing side, Ms. Sasha Maxwell will be the first speaker. I invite Ms. Maxwell to take her position at the front of the room. And Ms. Janoa Dangleben will be the second speaker on the proposing team. Ms. Dangleben. On the opposing side, Ms. Taekwanda Davis will be the first speaker. I invite Ms. Davis up to the front. And Ms. Romina Joseph will be the second speaker. I invite Ms. Joseph to the front. We have all ladies debating this morning. Ladies, have a seat. So, proposing team, once again, Sasha Maxwell and Janoa Dangleben, and opposing team, Romina Joseph, Taekwanda Davis, first speaker, and Romina Joseph. Who are the judges, the people who will be tasked with determining who is the winner and who is the runner-up this morning? Judging this debate, we have Ms. Gail Sharpless, and I will do a brief introduction of our judges. Ms. Sharpless is a bubbly individual, and she is, who enjoys meeting new people. She has a bachelor's degree in mass communications with a concentration in public relations, and she also has a master of education degree with a concentration in workforce training, adult, and continuing education. She's currently a lecturer here at the Dominica State College. We welcome to the judging panel, Ms. Gail Sharpless. Our second judge, Dr. Cyril Robinson. Mr. Rob Dr. Robinson was born and raised in the community of Portsmouth. And by profession, he's a dentist, but identifies as a beekeeper and farmer. His journey began as a teacher at the Dominica Grammar School before he was given the opportunity to study dentistry in the United Kingdom. On his return to Dominica, he served as a public servant and worked in numerous health centers around the island. He has also served as the chief dental officer. Dr. Robinson is currently in private practice where he continues to serve the public. We welcome Dr. Robinson to the judging panel this morning. Our third judge, Mr. Ashley Massicott. I am describing him, this is my description, as a father, a husband, a writer, and an educator. He has served the Dominica State College 
for over 20 years. And Mr. Massacre, I'm not aging you. I'm just, you know, stating the, the facts. And he has served in various capacities as a lecturer, as the registrar, and currently as the dean of the Faculty of Arts and Science. He holds a bachelor's degree in English and Communication Studies and an MSc, a master's degree in Educational Leadership, along with several other professional certifications. He has initiated a social media platform, AM Educate, which I'm very proud of, on Instagram and Facebook, dedicated to improving our understanding and usage of the English language. I welcome to the judging panel, Mr. Ashley Massacott. So we have all female debating teams. We have a, a judging panel that is a bit more, you know, diverse here. And I think we are all ready to go. Let me just remind of the rules of debating. In this debate, the first speaker from each team will have 10 minutes in which to deliver her argument. The second speaker will have seven minutes in which to deliver her arguments. After both teams, first speaker and second speaker, have presented their arguments, we will take a brief break for five minutes to allow them to prepare their rebuttal. The rebuttal will be delivered by the first speaker, the lead speaker of each team, and that rebuttal, a maximum time is allotted of three minutes for the rebuttal. The timekeeper will be the president of the DSC Literary and Debating Society, Ms. Bijou Desiree. She will be indicating to you debaters when you have one minute left with a raise of her hand. And when your time is over, she will keep her hand up. So keep your eye on Bijou debaters and on the judges and on the audience. But Bijou is the timekeeper here this morning. The judges may decide to penalize the debaters for any time infractions. This is based on the judge's discretion. We have not given set rules as we do in other debates for the amount of time that you can penalize for. But 10 minutes, seven minutes, three minute rebuttals, those are the times. And we will inform you of the time that each debater has spoken for. To the audience, the rule which applies to you is that you ensure that all your applause and your outbursts and any comments that you may have, that these are withheld until the end of each speaker's presentation. We don't want the speakers to be interrupted during their arguments. The judges will then determine the results based on the following categories. They will be looking at soundness of points, logical development, audibility and clarity, posture and personality, and command of material. They will be judging the rebuttal based on team coordination, general analysis of the debate, recall of points, and the ability to refute the points, and spontaneity. So these are the judging criteria that the judges will use. We have introduced the debaters. We have introduced the judges. Audience members, are you all ready for the debate? Okay. Debaters, are you all ready to debate? That, that yes, so shaky. I'll remind once again of the topic before we get started. The cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population. I will call on the first speaker from the proposing team, Ms. Sasha Maxwell. She's the first up to bat. She has 10 minutes in which to deliver her arguments. Ms. Maxwell. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues, worthy opponents, and passionate advocates for equitable healthcare access, welcome to today's debate where we confront a stark reality the prohibitive cost of dental health care. My colleague and I are proposing the topic the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population, and we aim to present compelling evidence to support our claim. I will discuss the economic state of Dominica, how it leads to a lack of health insurance and restricts the oral health goals. My colleague will discuss the tedious process of accessing public health care and the factors which contribute to the cost of dental health care. As we gather here, toothbrushes and floss may seem as mundane objects, 
but they symbolize a profound divide. The gap between those who can afford the smile of their dreams and those whose oral health is compromised by their financial barriers. In a world fueled by economic progress, money has become the driver towards proper access towards healthcare. Whether or not money is prohibitive should not even be a question in our minds. But the real question is, how extensive is its restriction? Today, we delve into this pressing issue and seek solutions in this debate. The World Health Organization defines oral health as the state of the mouth, teeth, and orofacial structures that enables individuals to perform essential functions such as eating, breathing, and speaking, and the ability to socialize and work without pain or embarrassment. Prohibitive is defined as conditions, often prices or taxes, so high or great, they restrict or prevent something. Adverse is defined as preventing success or development or the state of being harmful or unfavorable. Dominican dental clinics, clinics offer a wide range of services, such as extract, extractions ranging from $80 to $120, fillings running from $90 for children to $120 for adults, basic surgical extractions ranging from $120 to $500, teeth whitening at $500, root canals ranging from $600 to an astonishing $800, and lastly, the installation of braces at a staggering $10,000. Some of these figures may seem affordable, but let us not overlook a critical aspect, which is the spending capacity of Dominicans. Esteemed judges and fellow debaters, let us not be oblivious to the elephant in the room. The current economic state of Dominica does not allow for the expenditure on dental health care. The Dominican economy is struggling and poverty rates are at an all-time high. Britannica, an online information site, described Dominica as one of the poorest Caribbean countries. According to a study conducted by World Bank in 2023, the poverty data from 2008 had an estimated headcount rate of 28.8%. However, there has been an overall increase to a shocking 43%, which is almost half of our population, after Hurricane Maria in 2017. Dominica's economy has contracted by a whopping 10% in 2020, following the COVID pandemic-induced shocks and a sudden stop in tourism, which accounted for 25% of the country's GDP. This overall decline in economic activity has increased poverty expeditiously. A recent World Salary Survey states that the average working class Dominican makes approximately $18,780 or $1,565 per month in 2024. This coupled with the rising cost of essential goods create budgetary constraints. People are forced to make difficult decisions about how to spend their money in order to meet their basic needs. Priority is given to specific things like groceries, bills, and insurance, basic school fees, and other extras like mortgage earnings. Let us for a second envision ourselves in the position of those faced with financial constraints. If I, as an individual, am earning less than $2,000 every month, naturally, I'm only going to be able to afford things that are necessary at that moment. Although I may prioritize my oral health and I am aware of its importance, I am restricted. Ladies and gentlemen, let us not be insensitive, but instead let us acknowledge that the cost of oral health care is stifling to many Dominicans. Honorable guests, my views are not solely opinion-based, but are instead supported by the student body here at DSE. A survey recently conducted by my colleague and I among the DSE student body revealed that 60% of DSE students believe that Dominicans do not seek oral health care as often as they should. 70% believe that it is because it is too expensive. 75% of students believe that the average Dominican salary does not allocate for dental health care. Furthermore, 50% of students who have braces said that they found it very costly, and the other 50% said that they wanted braces but could not afford it at the moment. 
If you do not believe me, believe the views of the student body, the views of the future of tomorrow, the views of those who shape the prosperity of the dental healthcare industry in Dominica, young adults who sooner rather than later will enter the workforce and have the spending power. This brings us to another key point, which is the lack of insurance among the Dominican population. We are all aware that health inequalities already exist and being uninsured only worsens it, especially for the vulnerable low-income individuals. The Urban Dictionary defines insurance as an arrangement between a company or a state where it undertakes to provide a guarantee of compensation for a specified loss, illness, or death in return for a specific payment. People without health insurance are burdened with the entire cost of the medical care, which includes prescription drugs, emergency care, and regular checkups. According to an assessment of Dominica's health and private sector in 2012, the private health insurance covers only about 20% of the population, primarily through formal employment. While some charges are paid for, there is a limited collection of fees from patients who do not have insurance. This is concrete evidence that the majority of the Dominican population does not have health insurance. Thus, it is undeniable that the individuals with lower incomes are indeed struggling to afford dental care, regardless of whether they need it or not. And in their attempt to avoid any additional fees, they often evade oral health care on a whole. Honorable guests and distinguished visitors, despite insurance coverage, large deductibles can place a heavy financial strain on people and families. People are being discouraged from seeking critical medical care by these out-of-pocket expenses. And when do they seek and when they do seek oral health care, they are now facing a financial setback. In a profile on Dominica presented by Health in the Americas, they stated that in 2020, the public expenditure on health accounted for only 5.41% of public expenditure, while out-of-pocket spending on health accounted for 29.3% of total health expenditure. Ladies and gentlemen, based on the evidence that I have just presented, it is indisputable that the cost of oral health care is stifling to the Dominican public, and it is adversely affecting their oral health goals. Lastly, I'd like to touch upon the restrictive cost of oral health care and how it is adversely affecting the Dominicans. It is no secret that one's spending capacity is directly linked to not just their access to health care, but their access to quality health care. There is no denying that as the prices of oral health care continue to increase, the number of visits decrease. Alan Greenspan, a former chair of the Federal Reserve of the USA, once said, when prices go up, consumption goes down. It's as simple as that. The high cost of oral health care is creating disparities in oral health outcomes for the people of different economic classes. These disparities only amplify, amplify oral health inequalities and perpetuate cycles of poor oral health within the disadvantaged communities. The lower class individuals continue to have limited access to services such as fillings, cavity removals, and cleaning, whereas the upper class citizens, citizens continue to enjoy the best quality of oral health care. Chief Dental Officer Dr. Idolin John gave a summary from a national survey conducted in 2017. Among children ages 6, 12, and 15, adolescents ages 16 to 19, adults ages 35 to 44. From the six-year-olds, 55.6% had decay. Half of these decay were untreated. One third of the 12 year olds had dental cavities, and of those, 31.3% had decayed teeth, which were all untreated. 58.8% of the 15 year olds had decayed teeth, and 47.6% were untreated. 61.3% of the 16 to 19 year olds had dental cavities, and 46.6% of them had untreated lesions. Addressing these highly restrictive cost barriers, requires comprehensive efforts to improve oral health care affordability. We must prioritize affordability, accessibility, and equity in oral health care delivery, ensuring that all individuals have access to high quality care, regardless of their ability to pay. One solution to address the prohibitive cost is to implement universal 
dental coverage covered by an agency such as Medicaid. Medicaid is a joint federal and state program that helps cover medical costs for some people with limited income and resources. Another solution is the implementation of more preventative school oral health programs. These programs will be aimed at conducting oral health education sessions, teeth cleanings, fluoride rinses, and dental ciliate application. I thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Maxwell, for the judges. Her time was 11 minutes and 16 seconds. I'll now call to the podium the first speaker on the opposing team to deliver her arguments, Ms. Taekwanda Davis. Ms. Davis. Maintaining proper oral hygiene needs to be seen as a worthy health goal preventing tooth decay gum disease, and even bad breath. We know nobody likes a foul mouth. A quote from Chief Dental Officer, Dr. Idalyn John, at the official launch of Oral Health Week in 2017. Honorable judges, Madam Moderator, members of the Dental Health Unit, the Ministry of Health, members of the audience, the media, and my worthy opponents, a pleasant good morning to you all. My teammates and I are ready to totally oppose the argument that the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population. To refute this statement, we will present the judges with five strong, thoroughly investigated arguments. Firstly, I will expound on a few key terms in the topic. Oral health as defined by the World Health Organization, is the state of the mouth, teeth, and orofacial structures that enables individuals to perform essential functions such as eating, breathing, and speaking. The Cambridge Dictionary states that if the cost of something is prohibitive, this means that it is too expensive for most people. When something is said to adversely impact another, this means that it changes or influences it in a negative or harmful way. Oral health is an integral and very important part of our general health. It is much more than just the mouth, teeth, and gums. According to the World Dental Federation, oral health includes the ability to speak, smile, smell, taste, touch, chew, swallow, and convey a range of emotions through facial expressions with confidence, and without pain, discomfort, and diseases to the craniofacial complex. After all, a happy mouth is a happy body. This leads me to point number one. Maintaining proper dental health and achieving impeccable oral health goals begins with each one of us taking personal responsibility when it comes to caring for our teeth, gums, and smile. It is ours, after all. Adopting a good oral hygiene routine can help prevent dental caries and reduce the need to receive extractions. Brush, brushing your teeth and tongue at least twice daily, including after meals and at nighttime with a fluoridated toothpaste, flossing daily, and using an antibacterial mouthwash make up this routine. Even if we are aware of these steps and they have been instilled in us from childhood, do you think they are always followed through? Having regular dental examinations at least once a year also aids in this maintenance. Unfortunately, the lack of proper care and preventative dental treatment aids in increasing high levels of gum disease and extractions, resulting in a high percentage of our population walking around with missing teeth. It is quite unsightly and I am quite certain that this is far from our goals. Additionally, the high intake of free sugars among the general population, the percentage of tobacco use, as well as the percentage of alcohol consumption per capita of the population ages 15 years and older are risk factors that are recorded and proven to adversely impact oral health goals for the Dominican population. 
According to the Jenny Dominica fact sheet, it is notable that 56% of adolescents ages 13 to 15 reported that they drink carbonated soft drinks one or more times per day. The consumption of soft drinks with high sugar content and acidity can have harmful effects on oral health. So opponents, one can say that it is rather the lack of a proper and consistent oral hygiene routine, bad customary habits, and the delayed receipt of preventive dental care that prohibits the Dominican population from achieving its desired oral goals. Point number two. Contrary to the belief of my opponents, provisions have been made to help ensure that citizens of Dominica receive affordable dental treatments. Dental treatments are free for children 0 to 18 years of age and adults 60 years and over. Fire officers, police officers, nurses and prison inmates are also exempted from payments. Despite these initiatives, a survey conducted among children aged 6, 12 and 15, adolescents 16 to 19, and adults 35 to 44 and 50, 65 to 74 revealed that a vast amount had decayed, missing, and filled teeth. Based on these findings, it was visible that the burden of oral disease, particularly cavities and gum disease, is severe in our country. To mitigate the situation, the dental health, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, embarked on a vigorous campaign in the school dental program, which began in the Casibros Health District and continued in all of the primary schools on the island. The main objective was to ensure that all students within the school districts, beginning from grade K to grade six, are free of cavities. Despite these measures, Dr. John noted that once children have left the school dental program, they don't return for regular checkups. This leads me to my third and final point. Regardless of the cost and respective provisions made, dental visits are scarce. According to a survey conducted at the Dominica State College, the majority, which counted as 39.5% of the respondents, stated that they hardly ever visit the dentist, while only 9.3% stated that they visit the dentist often. When asked on a poll what was the reason they were unable to get oral health care, only 14% of people could not afford it, while 30.2% did not have the time. Though this survey comes for a small portion of our population, the results are telling. This survey points to the fact that it is not the cost of dental treatment that prohibits oral health goals on our island. And to say I was shocked was an understatement. Why should we blame the cost of a service when we ourselves hardly take the necessary preventive measures or barely put them to use? So my opponents, are we truly certain that it is a cost that prohibits or as stated adversely impacts the oral health goals of our island? A few, not all, walking around with the latest gadgets and clothing and proudly wearing smiles with missing teeth and exuding bad breath. These materials, which I can assure you, cost twice the amount it takes to visit the dentist for something as simple as a checkup. Moreover, we cannot rule cost of dental treatment as the main factor that prohibits and adversely impacts the oral health goals of the Dominican population. Thank you, Ms. Davis, for the judges. Her time was eight minutes and one second. It's now time for the second speakers to deliver their arguments. I call firstly on the second speaker from the proposing team, Ms. Janoa Dangleben, to deliver her arguments. She has seven minutes to do so. A pleasant day to everybody here, honorable judges, madam moderator, 
my esteemed colleague, my competent opponents, and the listening audience. Today, my teammates and I are here to propose a topic. The cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population. My teammate has already expounded on three major points, which when you think about it, is certainly agreeable. Firstly, it was stated that the Dominican economy is struggling and poverty rates are high. Individuals with low, lower incomes may struggle to afford dental care, regardless of whether they need it or not. Secondly, lack of insurance coverage. And lastly, the quality of healthcare is directly related to cost. And now, esteemed judges, I will address two more arguments to convince you that the cost of dental healthcare truly affects the Dominican population oral health. With my first argument, I share with you that the public health care takes too long to access and private practice dentistry is very expensive, so people don't have an option but to disregard their oral health goals. Most people have experienced the tedious waiting process at public dental clinics, long lines, continuous complaints from patients, boredom, and cramped muscles from waiting for hours to be called to a room for an appointed visit to a dental practitioner. Madam Moderator, it is no secret that most of us here have gone through this tedious experience when visiting the public dental clinic, whether as a child or an adult, and it is certainly unfavorable. My worthy opponents, your claim that the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and doesn't imp impact oral health goals in Dominica would be contradicting what is actually true. When you are enlightened to how expensive it is to receive dental health care at the private dental institutions as compared to the cost of other medical services in Dominica, you would want to agree with our claims. Some people prefer to make visits to private dental clinics as a more thorough treatment is implemented and quality procedures are completed. The wait is short and the service is not rushed. And along comes a relaxing atmosphere in contrast to the public dental clinics. But patients have to pay a high price for the services they seek at the private dental clinics. The price range for basic procedures at private dental clinics ranges from $180 to $200 and $120 to $500 for extractions. Glass inomer fillings, $90 for children and $120 for adults. And sealants, $60, as confirmed by a questionnaire made by myself to local private dental clinics from March 15th to March 16th as of the year 2024. If this low price of basic dental treatment is alarming to you, you will be more shocked to hear the prices of intricate dental treatments at two of the dental clinics which answered my question. Here, I will state and remind you of the prices of the following dental treatments or procedures which has already been mentioned by my colleague. Prophylaxis, $120 and up. I guess the up doesn't have a limit. Root canals, $600 to $800. Palpotomy, $400. Dental implants, $1,400 to $1,800. Crowns, $1,500. Whitenings, $500. And at the other dental clinic, root canal treatment range from $700 to $950. The average finance individual will often shy away from such prices and prioritize their spend, how they spend their money for necessities like food, clothing, and toiletries and immediate Medicare, such as purchasing pills for chronic diseases, such as arthritis and diabetes, and paying for cheaper medical services, rather than spending their income on these high costing dental services provided by private clinics. The individual with a humble income will instead perform preventative measures, such as regular brushing of teeth and interdental cleaning. But these preventative measures cannot heal the already damaged teeth or gums, they, and they are left with damaged oral health. 
for this second argument, I state that the quality of healthcare, healthcare is directly related to cost factors such as better procedures, efficient equipment, and availability of dental providers, which result in higher costs. One of the reasons for private clinics not being anywhere cheap is that the dentistry equipment is costly and its maintenance contributes to most of its expenses. However, expensive equipment brings great functionality that provides good output and a willingness to return by already visited patients since the procedure, procedures and treatments are satisfactory. The availability and hospitality of dental practitioners increases the favorability of clients towards the service provided by at the dental, private dental clinics. The private clinics will receive visits from people who can afford the prices of the services, but this begs the question. Can the average Dominican keep up with these price increases? We cannot compare the employed persons to the upper class ones as they are below the median salary. And undoubtedly, most of the Dominican population fall into the category and will easily find a hole in their pockets if they are treated at private dental clinics. Hence, this is why most Dominicans abstain from treating, having treatments at private dental clinics in Dominica. Another finding from the questionnaire conducted by myself on March 15 to March 16, as of the year 2024, for the, questionnaire, for the question asking about whether there are often arrears by patients at private dental clinics for teenagers and their guardians and adults, revealed that the answers were a resounding sometimes. This goes to say that not all patients who visit private clinics can immediately pay for their dental expenses. In conclusion, the cost of dental health care and or treatment is so high that it prohibits the Dominican population to have oral health goals and a positive outlook for their oral health. So yes, my colleague and I stand firmly proposing the topic, the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population. As I end, I want to remind you to please brush your teeth and make a smile contagious. Be true to your teeth and it won't be false to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Dangleben, for the judges. Her time was 7 minutes and 36 seconds. I'd now like to call on the second speaker from the opposing team, Ms. Romina Joseph, to deliver her arguments. Ms. Joseph? Pleasant good morning to all. Ladies and gentlemen, I simply want to open up by repeating the topic at hand. And I quote, the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and, ha and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population, end quote. This statement, people of any and all variety, is simply untrue due to the fact that it alludes to dental treatment being the primary, primary and even the only reason why oral health goals are not being met in the Dominican population. Factors such as dental anxiety and stigmatization, as well as accessibility, comes into play. And from this statement, completely goes out the window when discussing the lack of regular visits to the dentist. Some, if not most of you here, have had some sort of nervousness before going to any appointment with the doctor. It's normal. But there seems to be a frightening stigma surrounding oral hygiene that has about quadrupled in the last decade, not only in Dominica, but also the whole world, hence contributing to dental anxiety. According to rejuvenationhealth.com, dental anxiety is extreme nervousness associated with the thought of visiting the dentist for preventive care and dental procedures. Essentially, it is a fear, stress, or panic caused by any dental setting. According to Miriam Webster Dictionary, a stigma is defined, and I quote, a set of negative and unfair beliefs that a society or group of people have about something. 
end quote. Many people tend to think that the, ten, that the dentist will judge them, or even in local terms, malpale them about their lack of dental hygiene. Although this is simply untrue, other factors like pain caused by the needles or drills, past traumatic experiences, and even the eerie silence before going into the doctor's office trigger this type of anxiety. Most people do not like pain. I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, most people do not like pain. Therefore, they do not want to experience it, even when they are in pain. Toothaches and mouth ulcers trigger a visit to the doctor's office, but due to the stigma surrounding the dentist's office, many people, especially in the countryside, turn to natural herbs and medicines before considering a visit. There have been times many have heard to drink this, or take that, or shake some salt water in your mouth for a toothache rather than checking it out immediately. In a Stanford News article entitled, and I quote, people who fear pain are more likely to suffer it, end quote, the author explores a recent study about how pain and anxiety occur and how it is processed in the brain. The researchers noted insanely strong correlations between the subject's response to an anxiety sensitivity questionnaire and, and, and the ensuing brain activity in the medial prefrontal gyrus. That is the area in the brain that searches for wrong things. In conclusion, there are significant differences in the perception of pain from person to person. Some people can take pain in stride even though they don't enjoy it, but for many individuals, the anxiety produced by pain or even the thought of pain can cause them to experience pain even more often. Additionally, Past painful experiences is also one of the causes to dental anxiety. The, word, the worst part about this phobia is that it often turns an irrational fear into a much severe problem. One negative dental experience from childhood can affect a patient's oral health over their lifetime and even temper how they handle their children's dental experience. Dental anxiety and dental phobia are still prevalent among Dominican adult individuals and should be considered a dental public health issue. Dental anxiety is often described as a vicious cycle where avoidance of dental care, poor oral health, and psychosocial effects are common features, often escalating over time. Treatment should include therapy for dental anxiety or phobia. Hence, ladies and gentlemen, we should bring more awareness to dental hygiene and thus halt the stigma. Another factor that influences people's choices is the accessibility of the dental health clinics in Dominica. How many of you can list at least three dental clinics in Dominica that are within proximity to where you live? Exactly. Accessibility, according to Cambridge Dictionary.org, is defined as the quality of being able to be reached or obtained easily. Just a simple Google search of the quantity of operational dental clinics in Dominica will tell you there are seven dental clinics in Dominica and only one out of the seven is in Portsmouth. While the others such as Amor Dental Clinic and Green's Dental Clinic are operating in Roseau. That means six dental clinics are operating in Roseau. Just pondering on this fact brings into question the accessibility of those clinics to people living in Cabrits or Marigot. With that being said, there needs to be more awareness surrounding the issue of oral health. Too many people consider a visit unnecessary and inconvenient, thus are walking around with toothaches or in need of teeth fillings or braces. There needs to be initiatives as to informing the public about this urgent matter. Initiatives like bi-monthly free dental clinics to different regions of the island, as well as distribution of pamphlets or and products in the hospital, oral products in the hospitals or health centers are some of the initiatives that can be made. I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. Her time for the judges was six minutes and 32 seconds.
So this concludes the prepared argument section of the debate. The debaters now have five minutes in which to prepare their rebuttals. The lead speaker of each team is responsible for presenting a rebuttal, refuting the points of their opponents. And we'd like to give them some silence in which to prepare their rebuttals. But audience members, please, re well, let me just inform. When the judges are deliberating, we will have a discussion on the topic. So if you've been hearing things that you'd like to speak about during that brief um, segment where we wait for the judges' decisions, please take note. Don't forget, because I'd like to engage you in that period. So debaters, uh, five minutes. We are here at the Dominica State College where the dental health services of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services present Oral Health Week. Under the theme, a happy mouth is a happy body. With a debate topic, the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impact oral health goals for the Dominican population.
once again Dental Health Service of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services presents Oral Health Week. Under the theme, the happy mouth is a happy body with a debate. Topic, the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population in collaboration with the Dominican State College. Okay, so time is up, and it is now time for the rebuttal segment of this debate. Just to remind our listeners of the topic once again, the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population. Proposing the topic and presenting the rebuttal, Miss. Sasha Maxwell for the proposing team. Ms. Maxwell. The evidence presented by my opponents begs the question, are Dominicans willingly ignoring the state of their teeth or are they forced to by their financial constrictions? They reference that programs aimed at educating the public on preventative care exist. This issue begs the question, if there are programs set in place like this, why is it that Dominicans are still ignoring the state of their teeth? Why is it that they are not accessing even the free health care that is made available? The tiresome process of waiting in what seems to be the never-ending lines coupled with the quality of care given leaves people with the only other option but to visit the private dental clinics and unfortunately the prices of the private dental specialists are extremely high so if accessing the free health care is tedious and accessing the private health care is expensive what other option does the public have but to endure their oral deformities secondly my opponent spoke to the ignorance of Dominicans and their improper care of their teeth. It is almost laughable that my opponents would present such a refutable point given that this week is Oral Health Week. Initiatives such as Oral Health Week and this debate have efficiently educated the Dominican public on the importance of healthcare and how to go about properly caring for their teeth. Yet so many Dominicans do not seek oral health care. Think about it. How often do you hear someone say that they're excited about going to the dentist? For many, it is not about the discomfort, comfort, the fear, anxiety, or ignorance of dental procedures, but it, it is the financial burdens. Trust me, the only thing that Dominicans are afraid of is the cost. Ladies and gentlemen, the evidence my colleague and I have presented today is as solid as rock, and the facts are as clear as day. Due to the current state of the world, money is the key which unlocks doors of opportunity and health, determining who can enter and who is left out. We often say money cannot bring happiness, but it surely can bring health. The crippling economic state of Dominica, average salaries coupled with the lack of insurance coverage and low quality of health care do not allow the average Dominican to meet the cost of dental health care in Dominica. Thus, the cost of dental treatment is indeed prohibitive and adversely affecting the oral health goals for the Dominican public. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Maxwell. Her time for the judges was 2 minutes and 36 seconds. Just to remind, I did not say before we started rebuttals, but 3 minutes maximum for the rebuttals. 
I will now call on the first speaker from the opposing team to deliver her rebuttal, Miss Taekwanda Davis. Miss Davis. From repetitive statistics on the cost of dental treatment to the economic stature of our island to the availability of Medicaid insurance, my opponents have failed to mention that the cost of installments for braces and fillings as well as dentures can be paid in installments. Also, some of these Also, some of these procedures are not offered locally, and we have failed to realize that accessibility and other risk factors concerning alcohol consumption, sugar, and lack of proper dental hygiene all leads back to the, to the failure of proper oral health. Moreover, Cost definitely should not be stated or treated as the main factor that prohibits and adversely impacts the cost of dental treatment in Dominica. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Davis, for the judges. Her time was one minute and 12 seconds. So that concludes the debate on the proposing team and i'd like you to now is the time for the audience to have a little energy if you're listening on mo news to give a little you know energy in the chat for the for the proposing team let's give a round of applause to miss sasha maxwell and miss genoa wangoban and on the opposing team we had miss taekwanda davis and miss romina joseph <laughs> Thank you. So the debaters have done their jobs, and now the judges have to do their jobs. So the judges can, if they would like to, retire. We don't have a, a room to retire to, but if they'd like to step outside to collate their scores, or if they prefer to remain, it's up to them. But um, debaters, the pressure is off you. I will ask you just briefly to join your other members of the club in the audience because i don't want in this discussion segment that we're about to have for any of the <laughs> any of the discussion to be directed to you but actually to the topic that was at hand so debaters thank you we'll call you back up once the judges have given their results so be sure you can assist with a mic and we now want to get some feedback from the audience on the topic. So the points, the arguments that were presented or the actual debaters who presented the arguments, they are not the ones up for um, critique at this time. The judges will do so with their results. But the audience did have quite a bit to feed on from what was presented. The topic was the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population. We heard from the proposing team an outline of the economy, the economy and the current stat status of that economy and um, you know the inability of people to pay for, for dental health treatment. We heard from the opposing team other reasons why people are not accessing dental health treatment as they should including um <laughs> including a, a, a fear of going to the dentist and we have a lot of members here from the dental health team so i'd like some of those points to be addressed does anybody want to to start off with giving their feedback on some of what they have heard in today's debate or on the topic itself we have this we have this literary and debating um society members do you all have any points that you'd like to contribute based on what you heard dental health team people also don't be shy you can also contribute to the discussion and this is an educational arena 
it's a good chance to address some of the, the points or address some of the factors around this topic that you would like. So do I have anybody who wants to, to start me off? The debaters are taking pictures, but other people, um, is, there, is there anyone who would like to start off in this discussion? Vijay, your hand is up? Okay. Yes, they are. So good day, everyone. I really have a specific point that I would like to address, but I do agree with the rules inside that dental health is prohibit pro the cost of dental health is prohibitive to Dominicans. However, I feel like most Dominicans don't prioritize dental health to see like things, other things come first, like your body health, if they have to pay for this, do that. But I feel like dental health comes last, unless it's something that really troubles them, like you have a pain or it doesn't look good. But to stay check up regularly, I think it's something that is not really practiced, even though of the cost. Here. So she's bringing up the point of prioritization as it relates to spending and Dental health is not prioritized. Okay, does anybody agree with her her points? I, I want to throw out, I see someone with their hand up at the back. Um, I want to throw out a question to the students in the room, the Dominica State College students. So have you had a dental cleaning recently? Do you know what is the frequency that you're supposed to have your teeth cleaned? So I'm throwing this out to the, the State College students. If anybody wants to take a stab, at this in the room yes i'm seeing a hand going up i'm saying visual please facilitate them with the mic i see some people at the back putting up their hands <laughs> you buy pasta there or somebody and you'll come back to her yes <laughs> okay so i personally i prioritize my dental health so i think according to my dentist you have to like do a dental <laughs> She's getting no confirmation, but that's the information I have. I don't know. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, so she answered that question. There was another hand up at the back. Yes. Oh, and I should have asked you though, it's every six months, but you follow that regimen? She says yes. Anybody wants to raise their hand if they also do this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Yes, Miss Mens. Oh, um, um, I was just saying that I 100% agree with you in terms of people don't prioritize their mental health. Dental. Dental. <laughs> I mean, both too. <laughs> but um, I just feel like as expensive as we think it is, it's literally once every six months. I'm pretty sure you will be able to save every six months to go to the dentist. Uh, just for a checkup, at least, at the very least. And I know the state of the economy is real hard, but people find ways to save for other things. You can save for an Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, go ahead. Just one or two things. Um, I do I don't prioritize it enough, but I don't think it's a thing that people can just save up. Ten thousand dollars when they need braces, and I mean, yeah, they touched on being able to pay in installments and stuff. But I think, practically speaking, I mean, we can say it, but it's not easy to practice as it is to say it, because really and truly, people really don't have the money or like the flexibility to put aside that money for their teeth. I mean, we should, we should, but not everybody has that flexibility with their budget or their salary. So yeah, that's my two cents. So addressing the, the braces factor, somebody, yes. Okay, um, there's something about the cost of the dental treatment. Um, we have seven health districts in Dominica where the dental treatments are um, presented practically free of charge at a very low cost. Okay, and um, it is there in the primary health care system. You can access the, the free dental treatment from 0 to 18, free of charge. 
and our population doesn't take advantage of this um, thing that is free for them. <laughs> so we keep talking about the private, but we present it in primary health care. And like, the, like um, she made a statement in her presentation, one of them, that um, as soon as they leave um, grade six primary school, it's like you abandon your your um, dental health care. But um, I believe, like everybody said, you prioritize what you want done, and it is already at a low cost, so it is accessible. It's not that it's not accessible. But I believe um, people don't prioritize their dental health until they are paid. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I, I'll give a personal testimonial. Um, I think I have prioritized my dental care, and I think that's the reason why I like taking selfies so much and smiling because I have, you know, I, I have the ability to, you know, to do that. I think it's important. I think it is important even in terms of corrective dental treatment, which I did as well and um, paid in installments, <laughs> and it was definitely worth it. I have Ms. Deo wanted to contribute, and then I'll take one other student, and the judges are just about ready with their results, so we don't have much more time to wait. But go ahead. So um, I'm going to try to put all my thoughts into... Sorry, it might be long because I have a lot of things to address. So, first of all, when you talk about um, there are seven <laughs> districts in the entire Dominica, that is not enough. You say that yes, the dental um, the dental service is free, but how long do you have to wait? I personally can't go there because I have to be at work. So at what time am I supposed to have that sort of access? That's number one. Number two, saying that people need to prioritize. How many things are we supposed to prioritize? And I personally, I am a very strong advocate for affordable healthcare. You cannot tell me that because it's your health, you should be able to afford it. I have to pay rent, I have to, some people have to pay school fees, you have to do um, transport, you have to do all these other things and then you're still telling me that you're making me feel guilty because if I have a toothache and it's not bothering me, it's not stopping me from going to work, then it's my fault for not being able to afford to prioritize something that I find expensive. My glasses are not good but they're expensive to replace. I haven't replaced them in two years. I don't think that's fair. Um, as the opposing, because I think that it's unfair that the, the, the focus has been on cost, when the opposing team brought up many other um, factors that should be considered first. First of all, accessibility. Second, how many, how much, um, what's that word? How much of public health focuses on dental health? How much discussion is there? How much awareness is there out there? Because I do remember, yes, when we were in primary school, but when you get to secondary school, is there a continuation of the discussion of your dental health? Because you're like, oh, after primary six, yes, but was there a continuation? They stopped giving us um, fluoride. I think by grade four, I didn't do grade six, but I know by grade five, they stopped giving us fluoride. Um, the dentist that used to come to school to check our teeth did not come when I was in grade seven and definitely not when I was in convent. So where is the public? Because it's health. When it comes to health, I, I'm, not, I'm not supportive of an individualistic approach to health matters. It's supposed to be a social, a community thing. It's public health. And I don't, I don't like that idea of, oh, you bought an iPhone. Why couldn't you fix your tooth? My phone, I need it for communication. When my tooth is aching, how am I going to call the dentist to make an appointment? I need the phone. Thank you. So, yeah, so, that's it. Thank, thank you. you. We do have the results. Yes. So, we want to shift. Yes, Bijou. We want to shift to the results of this debate. Activity period is over. I have quite a number of students who have had to leave. So we want to get to the results, which I'm sure everybody is waiting for. I'd like the debaters to return to their seats and await their fate. So the proposing team, Ms. Sasha Maxwell and Ms. Janoa Dangleban, I welcome you back to the front. 
and the opposing team is Taekwanda Davis and Ms. Romina Joseph. I welcome you back to your seats. Okay. So I will, I have the, the great pleasure of giving the results as determined by our three very capable judges. I will let the students know because they didn't know, and of course our listening audience didn't know, what are the prizes that they are going to be winning and everybody is going to be rewarded. So there has been a great effort made to make sure that everybody is going to be rewarded. The winner will be receiving a trophy, compliments of Simon, sponsor and contributor to this event, and a certificate that will be presented by the oral health team members and a $400 cash prize. So the winners of this debate, that is what you will be receiving when I announce that. The runners up will also be rewarded with a $200 cash prize. And I will be announcing the best speaker for today's debate. And this person will receive a gift certificate, compliments Jungle Bay Resort. And, that, and they can get to relax. Um, for achieving this great feat of being the best speaker in this debate. We also have tokens, which will be presented by Jolly's Pharmacy. The representative is here. And Jolly's Pharmacy, of course, I will interject a partner for Oral Health Week and always leading the way in healthcare. So we are ready for the results, yes? We have the proposing team, the ladies on my right, have earned themselves 639 points. And the opposing team, the ladies on my left, have earned themselves 613 points. That being said, it's close, but the proposing team, Miss Sasha Maxwell and Miss Janoa Dangleben are the winners of today's debate. The best speaker was judged to be from the opposing team. I haven't said who it is. And that speaker is Miss Romina Joseph. So typically, typically we ask for the judges' critique and how did they come up with the, you know, the results. But because we are pressed for time, as I said, activity period is over, and I wanted people to get the the juice, you know, the results. We just move straight into that. But thank you, judges, so much for your assistance here today. I'd like to call on the representative, I guess, from Jolly's Pharmacy, and I don't know if the certificates are also ready to present, or just the tokens from Jolly's Pharmacy. But if they're, who is presenting, you can come up now to present the participants, the debaters with their prizes. So once again, we have winning today's debate, the proposing team, Ms. Sasha Maxwell and Ms. Janoa Dangleben winning today's debate. And the best speaker from the opposing team was Ms. Romina Joseph. Another round of applause for everybody's effort. And Dr. John will also facilitate the handover of prizes. So ladies, you can stand. Yes. <laughs> Best speaker, Romina Joseph. She's receiving the token from Jolly's. Ah, come at the front. Okay, so the position should be, yes. And Miss Taekwanda Davis of the opposing team also receiving her token of appreciation from Jolly's pharmacy. The winners of today's debate, the proposing team, 
Miss <laughs> Sasha Maxwell and Miss Janoa Dangoben. And thank you. And the presentation of the trophy. Of course, the trophy sponsored by Simon. Big trophy for the winning team, the proposing team. You all will share the trophy one week with Sasha. <laughs> one week with Janoa, or of course it can stay in my office i don't know which which one you prefer but congratulations to you and thank you to the sponsors and partners for this event and for oral health week jolly's pharmacy and of course as i mentioned the sign man for this nice trophy for our winning team Our runners up will also be given their certificate and their cash prize. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And the best speaker once again, Miss Romina Joseph, winning herself a gift certificate compliments Jungle Bay Resort. She's going to get a massage at the resort. So. Romina, you'll be well relaxed. Feel free to take me along <laughs> with you. And thank you to Jungle Bay for the best speaker prize. And this concludes the debate. We do have a vote of thanks. Dr. John, are you doing the vote of thanks? Okay. So I call on Dr. Dira, okay, for the vote of thanks. Um, audience, you've been wonderful. Thank you so much for your attention. And thank you to my students of the Literary and Debating Society for coming through for this debate and my judges. That's my thank you. And now Dr. Dira will do the vote of thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. The more you practice the art of thankfulness, the more you have to be thankful for. Norman Vincent. The dental department of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Services says thank you. Every year, World Oral Health Day is celebrated on March 20th, and the de dental department uses this time to increase our educational activities. The theme for this year's celebration is a happy mouth, a happy body. This year, Jolly's Pharmacy, in collaboration with the department, we say thank you. We express gratitude to the Dominica State College Debating and Literary Team along with the faculty members as they debated the topic, the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population. To the Georgies, Ms. Gail Sharpleys, Dr. Cyril Robinson, and Mr. Ashley Massicott. Thank you for taking the time out to lend your expertise to be part of this spectacular display of friendly competition. To the moderator for guiding the debate, we say thank you. To the sponsors who have partnered with the department in making our week of activities a success. The Signman, Jungle Bay Resort, Fort Young Hotel, J. Astafans and Company Limited, J's Motor Rentals, Josephine Gabriel and Company Limited, Dr. Damian Dublin Dental Clinic, Dr. Green's Dental Clinic, The Family Dental Practice, St. George's Dental Clinic, 
Mr. Graham of Surgical Insurance Services Advisor, Ms. Anna Maria Clark, Pastor David Serra, and the Deliverance Baptist Church. We say thanks. To the debating teams, we say thank you. To the students present in the audience, for your presence here, we give thanks. And last, but by no means the least, we say thanks to the members of staff for ensuring that this week was a success and in spe and special mention being made of our secretary we say thank you to the media for carrying live this presentation here today we give you thanks we would like to invite you to continue this week with us as tomorrow there will be the painting and art competition by the preschool under the government headquarters. There will also be a display of healthy snacks by the secondary schools. And we invite you to listen to some vital information on the HealthVise radio program with Jolly's Pharmacy on Q95. On Thursday, there will be a walkthrough through the communities of Sufri and Scotthead, where we aim to interact with the public. There will also be a display outside of Jolly's Pharmacy. Friday, being dubbed National Fruit Day, we invite everyone to have a fruit for snack. Thank you. This was the Dental Health Services of Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Social Services present Oral Health Week. On the theme, a happy mouth is a happy body, a debate. Topic, the cost of dental treatment is prohibitive and adversely impacts oral health goals for the Dominican population in collaboration with Dominica State College. This live was once again brought to you by Emma News. Thanks for joining.